Hey, what's up guys? It's Fulke here. I just want to give a shout out to Boogie Bentley, Dauber, and the Indie Kid over at the Talking Vols Network on YouTube. Keep doing your thing, guys. Go Vols. What's going on, guys? This is the Indie Kid coming at you. This is the Talking Vols channel. This is your Basket Vols post-game show. Once again, my name's the Indie Kid. I'm Dauber. Tennessee. Takes out UT Martin, 90 to 62. Interesting kind of game. We'll get into that here in just a few minutes. But uh, let's run down the chat real quick and see. We've got 20. Hopefully, we'll get that going. We got uh, the Godfather himself, Donovan, in here. Can we pass the damn ball? Donovan, again, three things I noticed pass the ball. Powell can play. Victor Bailey's playing defense better than anybody. I never thought I'd ever say that. John Hill almost have a better chance of winning a scratch off than making a shot so far. Come on, balls. It is team pass the ball and shoot better. But those had to Wayne's, have been early on. Yeah. Uh, Wayne Starr and Jeff Escovy to be seems to be pressing, maybe because Chandler and Powell, whatever the reason they need to move the ball better than in the second half. Christy Banks, let's go, baby. Big win. GBO, go big orange. Cody Branch, Tennessee going to the final four. If we keep progressing, man, what a change. And from the first comment. <laughs> To the last, and then uh, Terry Reed. Kennedy Chandler is the real deal. We'll go with that one, Dauber. Thoughts on the game? First thoughts. Um, I had three guys that kind of stuck out, all new guys. Uh, of course, Kennedy Chandler, um, he, he does seem to do, do lots of good stuff with the ball in his hands. Uh, he makes the guys on the floor with him better. Um, you you got to think. When Fulke gets back healthy and is in the game, that that's going to be a, a really good combination. You you hope you hear that uh, Chandler Chandler dumps it to, to Fulkerson for for an easy bucket. Um, Wait, better than the combo of Chandler and Euros? Man, um, that I've got that in my notes. Uh, Euros being Euros, um, <laughs> you know he he had. Uh, I think two guys blow right by him. It made me think of the Alabama game last year, uh, you know, and, and frankly, nobody uh, played defense or s stepped over in front of somebody driving to the basket in that Alabama game. And it's very reminiscent of that early on. Um, and, and then on the offensive end, he, he made a really nice uh, turnaround uh, kind of baby hook. And then uh, I think the next trip down the floor, uh, Chandler fed him beautiful pass. All he would have had to do is he dropped it and he, he fumbled it all over the place. So, <laughs> um, uh, Huntley Hatfield, I, I thought he played good, uh, for, for a couple small chunks of time. If he can string that together, I think he's going to be a factor. Um, and then Powell, um, that that's a good pickup out of the transfer portal. Um, really shores up the shooting on the outside. Um, the, the thing that struck me, my, my first thought is, man, it's, it's going to be hard to find the combo, the right combo, uh, out on the floor, the right guys coming off the bench. Um, <clears throat> I, I'll tell you right now though, uh, you, you're not going to find a lot of teams that Kamwa or Euros are, are starting for. Um, so that's. When you get Huntley Hatfield developing and progressing a little bit more and Fulkerson back, I think the lineup's going to look a lot different. Um, you know, overall, I, I think his first game jitters, uh, nerves early on, uh, maybe pressing a little bit. They, they kind of calmed down after after the half, uh, shored up the defense a little bit. I know Bar Barnes got in, uh, I guess it was Chandler and, and then uh, James. He got on them uh, when they 
left a, a guy running free and, and spotted up for an open three. Uh, he called that timeout, and, and he was just letting them have it. So <clears throat> it was interesting to see uh, this is really a, a completely different style from a Rick Barnes coach team. Um, and, and I think that's a little bit refreshing to see because he's, I think, leaning on the strengths of the players that are on this team rather than his philosophy. So we'll see how that plays out the rest of the season. But, uh, hey, a, a win's a win coming out the gate with a W. Um, it it uh, went a lot more in the second half like I thought it should go. But what what are your thoughts, man? Kennedy Chandler's a stud. He is uh, what we thought. One, he's one and done. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I like what he brings. You made an interesting point. This this is not a Rick Barnes style of team. Yeah. It's not your traditional slow it down, grind it out. I mean, they're running, they're gunning, they're firing. I love it. That's my style. It's kind of like the hypo offense. <laughs> Full throttle. Um, I, I'm just not never a fan of the – the slow down offenses. I think that basketball is in that time now. Yeah, you can win some games with that slow down stuff, but overall, that, that's just not the way now. Um, 17 out of 40 from three point range. That's a lot of threes. That's a pretty nice percentage, though. And yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think with Euros. You know, you're getting what you get. What you want out of him, solid minutes. I, I mean, he did some good things tonight. Like you said, he he is what he is. I didn't think Conway was that bad. Uh, he he really, had 11, and uh, he had 14 rebounds, I've just looked He turned so. it on in the second half. Um, I, After, I, uh, didn't he start the first before the TV timeout with uh, three straight fouls Yeah, in the yeah. second half? Um, you know, and I thought – I actually had written down uh, in the first half, uh, particularly about Uros and Kamwa, um, really seeming to not progress and look similarly lost. And, uh, you, you know, I, I think those guys would be standouts on a team like UT Martin. Um, but because of injuries and, and you know, roster turnover, they're they're going to see minutes on this Tennessee team, um, so and it's it's good to have guys that do have some game experience and can give you even if it's spurts and short minutes. You know, uh, you let somebody like Fulkerson or, um, like I said, if if Huntley Hatfield progresses, give those guys a, a, a you know three four minute break, uh, combined with like a TV timeout or, or something. Uh, let them catch their wind, and uh, hopefully you you maybe get a little pro- bit of production from them, but you're not really giving up much when they're out there. You know, we saw the same thing um, uh, Gaines um, before he transferred out. He 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 was an excellent defender, kind of a liability on offense, but then of course um, he was in uh, in in that tournament game and got fouled and then missed his foul shots. And, you know, it's one of those things, it's kind of a give and take. And I think that's where, like I said, the staff is going to have to find the right combination of guys on the floor because they could, they could go with too big and then they could go five small. And tonight, I think, especially early on UT Martin, uh, their, their speed really played a factor in how the game began and them kind of clawing their, their their way through that first half neck and neck. Um, plus, they, they shot like almost 60% in the first half. And, and I didn't figure that was going to hold up, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mentioned. A, so I thought it was, uh, I thought the starting line, yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to give. Credit to UT Martin in the first half, too. That's a pretty interesting stat with them that not a single guy from last year returning. Yeah. And 
man, the, they were outrunning Tennessee to begin with. I thought that Tennessee was having a hard time keeping up with them. But, I mean, you look at what they had on the floor, you had Chandler. But, really, the rest of the guys out there, Josiah Jordan James, pretty good athlete. Kamwa, I think, okay. But they, UT Martin definitely had more speed yeah. to begin with. And um, But then they kind of shifted around. You know, you've got Vascovi, who ended up shooting the ball pretty well. But Powell, Powell added a dimension to it. Uh, of course, if you get Victor Bailey on, he can he can pick it up and go. Um, you know, like Terry Reed said here, Ziegler, and, and you mentioned this when you saw him in the scrimmage. That's, Man, he he he's small, but he is fast. My my dark house dark horse for for a potential breakout season. Um, it, and he's going to be one of those guys that is sort of uh, shuffling around, fighting for some of those extra minutes. And it's all about making the most of uh, what you do when you get those minutes. It's uh, can you provide a little bit of productivity? Um, and I think the more productivity you provide, the more likely you are to see the floor. But with Rick Barnes, you go in and score 10 points real quick, but you get burned on the defensive end. He he just sits you on the bench anyway. Yeah. Because he wants you playing hard on the defensive end. And, and I think – right. To, to make that point, you saw when this game kind of turned uh, was on, I think Huntley Hatfield had a uh, uh, an easy basket and then a block shot that turned around and went back the other way and uh, kicked out to somebody for a three. So there was like a five-point swing right there based on defense. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I had a comment. Uh, Donovan said, I've always been a Vescova guy, but any kid do you think Powell should get more – I, I think they can be at the same time, honestly. And and I said that in the preview show. I would like to see a lineup. Some I think if you've got those two guys along with Chandler running it, you've got two shooters. Mm-hmm. And, and I think you'll see both of those guys on the court quite a bit together. Well, I mean, um, you you look at what Alabama did last year, having four guys out there that can shoot the three. And based on what I've seen uh, in, in the – um, post or the preseason game, and, and then tonight, they're not afraid to jack up a three, man. They're Mm-mm. um, so you know, you got Vescovi, uh, yeah, Vescovi, six of 11. Ba- Bailey, uh, he started off a little bit clunky, but then he hit a couple, I believe. What he finished yeah. with, uh, two out of seven, two out of seven, uh, Powell, three out of five, Chandler, four out of four. Yeah, Ch- Chandler shot the ball well too. That's something that I was uh, I was happy to see that um, he he's not just a floor general, but he can score. And uh, you know, it it's still it's it's hard to tell. And I said this to you right before we went on. Uh, based on a game like this, it's hard to get a read for the team because they were shuffling the lineup a lot. They they were moving guys in and out. You don't have your core in Fulkerson out there. So, you know, it's – I think a lot of that was you're getting guys their first taste of college action. Um, typically, we don't see Barnes use a, a really deep bench, but, I mean, with all the talent that he's got, I think you might see him adjust a little bit. Like I said, he's adjusted his style offensively it seems. Um, so it, it's it's going to be fun to watch. Watch this team unfold and grow and uh, see some of these younger guys uh, kind of hit their stride. Uh, we got to see that last year with uh, Keon and uh, Springer, and, and that was that was really fun to watch uh, because it, it's – and it's something that uh, I, I don't want to divert from basketball here, but you're seeing that with the football team too. You're seeing coaching happening, and, and I think you you see that with Barnes uh, and the, the staff. They, they are developing and, and growing these uh, athletes a, as players, and it sets them so it sets them up well for the next level. Um, so I think that's part of the reason why uh, Rick Barnes has been able to recruit well, um, and we'll see if that continues to play out. 
because yeah. like, like we've talked about, that's kind of in the tank right now. I mean, I think there are a, a number of reasons why, but we'll, we'll see. Maybe De- definitely get- weird. Yeah, it's definitely been weird. Uh, uh, let's see. Wayne said staff still works with their best squad. Too much experience. Not to- yeah, I mean, I, I you've got to think tonight they're toying around with their rotations. They'll probably do it with ETSU this weekend as well. Not that you take ETSU for granted by any means. I'm not really sure what they're – they had turnover this mm-hmm. year as well. Um, so we'll see. But, you know, these first couple games and then you got Villanova coming in. I, they probably have a bit of an idea what they're going to do. But also, you know, it, it's good to see it when, for lack of a better term, the bullets are real. When, you know, when it's – when the lights come on, that's when you find out. Right. what you've really got uh you know right now it was i think i was probably three for five on my starting lineup pick i, I definitely you know when fulkerson comes back he's starting be interested to see if kamwa i mean like I, said, I i thought he did some good things tonight i think he's got some potential <clears throat> out there especially since he's added you know some outside he rebounded well um uh, a good, an interesting mix. They've got some some veterans, a lot of young guys, but I, I, I'm happy with the style of play on it. I thought it was exciting, and you're going to see those nights. Uh, the, the downside with that, there's going to be those nights where they're about five out of forty at some point. <clears throat> Hopefully well, not. But and that that reminds me of, uh, gosh, I guess four or five years ago. Uh, when it was sort of a, a live by the three, die by the three team. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, w- when you're hitting them, when the shots are dropping, it, it, it's it's all well and good. But on those nights where you can't find the rim, uh, man, it, it's a struggle. Uh, you can get ran out of the gym really quick. Um, you know, it, it is a, it's a far cry from uh, all the mid-range jumpers that they took last year. Um, that was just kind of an anomaly, uh, really weird. Um, if you ever, uh, get the chance, I, I think you and I have talked about it, the stats by will stats by mm-hmm. will, um, uh, really, really uh, I can't remember the name, but I know what you're talking about. Um, good, 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 uh, site to kind of, uh, get some info and, and does a lot with, uh, the statistics and he, he was really critical of all the mid range jumpers that, uh, the Tennessee team took last year. Um, it was a it, lot. Yeah. I mean, it was a high well, percentage. It, it, it led uh, all all of <clears throat> NCAA basketball. Um, so it's it's interesting. Um, uh, the the SEC is going to be tough, um, and Tennessee's got a tough schedule leading up to conference play. So um, they should be well tested and uh, really. Uh, starting starting this weekend against ETSU, um, you know, it, it's that that'll be a, a bigger test than tonight was, and then you're you're right into uh, you know some of the big dogs, uh, Villanova, and then uh, the the Sunday after that will be either UNC or Purdue. So mm-hmm. not gonna be easy any of those games and. Uh, the non-conference schedule is great. That's, oh, I, I mean, yeah. I love it. I love it because it's – most of your co- – I, I mean, go back to Pearl. Pearl always played a pretty strong non-conference schedule. Conzo Martin, he would pad his. Yeah. He, you know, they'd be looking good going into conference play, and then all of a sudden they're in NIT or they're barely making the tournament. Uh of course, Tyndall, he wasn't there long enough. I was thinking Tyndall played a decent schedule, and Barnes, since he's been there, has played a strong schedule, and, and it seems to be getting stronger and stronger by the year. That I think this one may be the strongest non-conference schedule that he's had so far. That, In my opinion, especially when you got a team like that, the SEC is probably the best it's been in a while from top to bottom. Now, some of the bottom teams are, are not very good at all, but your top of the conference is strong. 
I, I think that at least top to mid part of it yeah. is very strong this year. That's preparing you for it. You're going to see the different styles, the different teams. You know, people saying, well, we're shooting too many threes. I mean, that's the game now, though. It is. I mean, that's the NBA. That's college. You, if you, you can't shoot, you're either you dunk- be playing some good defense, or you're gonna get run out of the gym. You're either dunking or, or having a, a a really close uh, layup or, or turnaround, or it's a three, and not just a three, a deep three. Um, yeah. Powell and Chandler both spotted up from like the E. Yeah. <laughs> a couple times, man. That it, it's crazy. It, if I mean, and, and granted, I didn't play a whole lot of uh, school basketball. I played some rec basketball and, and you know, just with my buddies and stuff. But uh, the little bit I played in, in school, if if you shot one, you know, three or four feet behind the three-point line, you're getting chewed out. And, oh, yeah. and now, now these guys are, like, spotting up from the next county. It's, it's crazy to watch. And they hit it. They're consistent yeah. with it. That's what's – that's what's crazy. Well, you got the Dame Lillard philosophy. You yeah. cross half court, and you're in range. I mean, you're you're, you're probably going to see more of that as you go along. More guys. I don't know. I can't see a guy like Barnes or Calipari or one of them being too happy about that. But there will be some coaches that will, hey, if, you, if you're hitting it, whatever, shoot yeah. it from wherever you want to. Walk in the but gym and uh, shoot it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I mean, they can throw it in from the other end, and as long as you hit it, fire it. Who cares? But uh, 94 people right now in the, uh, watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully, we can get that up over 100, and uh, yes. yeah, we'll take a page out of the Boogie Bentley book. You guys know what to do. Smash that like button. I'll throw it out there. Sh- get these 94 people to share it out. Tweet it out. Text it out. Let's get it up over 100. Yeah, man. Let's do it. Let's build this thing. And hopefully hopefully when we get into the season, start getting into more of these games, we can build this thing up to a nice little audience each week. Uh, basketball's probably got out of the three major UT sports, at least men's-wise, football, baseball, basketball. I think right now basketball probably has the least buzz about it. You know, we talked off air the other night about you know, videos and stuff for it. And I'm like, man, there's not, there has just not been a whole lot out there. I mean, there's probably some things we could have talked about a little more. But, I mean, recruiting's been weird. Like, yeah. back in June, it looked like they were getting ready to clean up. And they got B.J. Edwards. And now they've really struggled. And, uh, but, you know, they, this staff's not forgotten how to recruit. You know, Rick, I mean, they just did it last year, had an awesome class. I don't know. I think there's a lot of things. I think NIL, even though Barnes said they're not strong, I think there's – I don't know. He made a comment about other schools promising things. So, you know, I don't know what's going there. I, I think NIL is hurting them. I'm not sure how much, but I, I think it's playing a big role in it. Um, You know, they lost two assistants. Those relationships. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Uh, you know, the good thing with it is there is the portal. <clears throat> yeah. Teams are using it. Bama, Arkansas, Kentucky, they all used it this offseason. I would imagine that's where Tennessee is going to go because just thinking out loud on it, Fulkerson, super senior, we know he's gone. Uh, I, I can't see Chandler staying more than a year. If Huntley Hatfield, if he becomes a force, I would not be surprised to see him gone. That'll be interesting since he did reclassify. He's just 17. So, he, you know, they had three reclassifiers in him, Ziegler, and uh, Tomba out of Knoxville. Out of Knoxville, yeah. Yeah. So, well, it's a young team. There's a lot of young, and, um, you know, they really – they may not lose much after this year. They could lose a few. They may not lose any outside of Fulkerson and Chandler. Who knows? Uh, I don't think Bailey's a super senior, so he could return. We'll see where recruiting goes. I mean, they they've still got a month till the signing period. No, 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 no. I think the signing period for basketball is this month. I'm thinking of football. Uh, so we'll see where they go with the spring. There'll be names pop up in the spring. Yeah, and then of course there's 
seems to be the uh, <laughs> the motto of Talking Vols, we, the portal. I mean, there's always the portal. And i got to imagine Barnes will hit that as well. But uh, still got to like this class, like what they brought in. Hey, we're up to 100. There we go. Rock and roll. There we so, go. All right. All right. Sky's the limit now. But uh, <laughs> curious to see what this team does. I, I'm curious to see, is this the style every night? Is right. this just kind of they're playing around with it to begin with? Did they just match UT Martin's pace? I got to think, you know, you saw them scrimmage a little bit. Dane Bradshaw was talking about on the broadcast how they were doing this in it practice, was quick. doing the, this in scrimmages. The, the, I got to think this is a new new style. And, and the good thing is they, they've got shooters. Yeah. And that was the thing. The, the guys were up and down the court. And, and granted, we, we sat and watched 15, 20 minutes of basketball action. And, uh, you know, that's – it's hard to base anything off that. And like I said, it's hard to base anything off of tonight's game because it, it, it didn't seem to me like you had your core group in there ever. It just seemed like there was always a piece missing or somebody that was – I mean, yeah, Folky was sitting the bench. So there, there's one. That's That's a big piece right there. A uh, big piece of the puzzle that's not out there. So, um, I think moving forward, I think they they begin to pare it down a little bit more this weekend. Um, and, and you know, I, I really think that that Barnes is the type of guy. If if you're not busting your tail on the defensive end, regardless of what you can do offensively, you, you're not going to be out there. So, I, I think guys that. Uh, prove it on the defensive end. I, I think they'll earn some minutes. Um, it'd be interesting to see if if it's something where you've got two or three spots where you've got you know three guys that you can rotate in and out and and maybe try to try to have guys that are fresh. Um, you know, we, we we saw last year. Of course, last year was an, an anomaly and, and a weird season. Uh, with with all the COVID and and uh, you know not playing in front of capacity and um, all of all of that stuff, but you know I think guys were winded last year, and maybe part of it was because you know they didn't have all the adrenaline because arenas weren't full, um, you know just crazy stuff. So. We'll see how things go. We'll see how the season progresses. Um, I, I imagine that based on the the roster and the people there, I mean, you saw Chandler go up the floor in three or four seconds and not, not foul line to foul, like all the way up the floor for a layup. I mean, that's, that's, that's running a fast break by yourself off a made basket. Um, so yeah, they've I, missed that. Yeah, that, that's something, um, you know, he, he had a couple of turnovers tonight and that's one thing, um, you look back to last year, um, I think they opened up with UNC Asheville and had something like 17 turnovers. Um, what was the final tonight? I, I've got it here. I did, uh, where I've uh, got it on the ESPN stats, they don't have turnovers. 10. Ten turnovers. Ten turnovers. So that's that's something that they cleaned up, um, and I think that's something that um, speaks to having a true point guard. Um, so it, you gotta you gotta figure uh, with what this team lost in last year. Um, you know, kind of your go to guys. Somebody's got to step up and be the man. And and I think you said um, in the previous show. Um, e even though he's a freshman, um, you were hoping it'd be Chandler. And, and based on what I saw tonight, I, I think it very well could be. I think Chandler has the, the tools and the talent. Um, and, and tonight he, he showed some, some strength um, mentally, uh, you know, in, in a tight game. He didn't really force things. And that's something we've seen 
guys that have slid over and played the point uh, in Viscovi or uh, even Josiah James at times, um, it's like they force some stuff. Um, you know, Viscovi was bad about getting in the air and, and not knowing what to what he was going to do with the ball and, and throwing it away. Or, um, but man, you got to love seeing him come off a, a screen or, or uh, get a handoff and, and jump and shoot. Uh, I think that plays to his strength. So, you know, putting guys in, in position to be successful uh, that, that suits their game. And, and I think that's that's going to be a big key for this team. I think Vescovi had a possession or two where there was one possession, I know in the first half, where he shot three times once. They got a second chance. He hit it again. Second half, it was three times and yeah. he finally hit it. So there was two possessions. He had five threes yeah. on it. So two for five on that. But, uh, Oh, let me get to Super Chat here. John Hill. Uh, let me find it here. John Hill, man, the threes were flying. Let's go, balls. Thank you, John Hill. We appreciate you on that. Yeah, the threes were flying. Uh, different style. I mean, Tennessee shot threes before in the Barnes, Barnes era, era, era. But, I mean, they, they, were, they were quick. Like you said, and people have alluded to it, Chandler's speed. It's just – and Ziegler, too. Both those guys can fly. Uh, if you end up with a, a James or a Vescovi, you know it's going to be a little bit of a slower pace going on. Um, score record on threes tonight, 43 shot. Now, if I'm not mistaken against – in the scrimmage, they shot 46 threes. Of course, that's not an official game. I know that, but that I think that was kind of a sign of things to come. I believe it was 46 threes that they shot in the scrimmage a couple Saturdays ago. So, I mean, this this team's going to bomb them. And, and when they're on, you know, they're curious to see how their defense progressed. I know Barnes was not happy a couple of times, and i got to imagine at the half there was uh, – Probably a little bit of an interesting locker room. You you saw a different team in the second half. Well, but. to be honest with you, the the three points what kept them in the game in the first half uh, because yeah. uh, UT Martin was shooting at, at such a high clip, and, and it's it, it's easy to shoot that higher percentage when everything's a layup. Um, I, I think they started off. Uh, I think the first four trips down the court. Were, were layups for them when they just yeah. blew right by the defender. Um, and I thought, man, this doesn't, this doesn't look good. And no. tw- Twitter was, uh, it was on fire. Uh, you know, some, some people uh, calling out Barnes and I'm like, man, it's game one, <laughs> first five minutes, you know, give, give it a break. I, I thought there was no way that UT Martin could sustain uh, shooting as well as they were shooting to begin the game. Well, I mean, it, you know, it's just like a football a game's not one and a half. Yeah. It's not one at the first half. So, you know, they hung with Tennessee pretty good. Tennessee got away a little bit toward the end of the half. What was it? 8.4335 at the half, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then it was all balls second half. It was, uh, yeah, the, the defense picked up. Of course, they were shooting lights out. In the second half, uh, let's see. We've got another super chat here. Xavier Sanders, I love this fast run, go to offense like our football. Yeah, I, I, I'm the same. I love it. Um, I, I mean, thinking back to and, and Dauber, you probably remember. There's probably numerous people in the chat. I know Wayne Starnes remembers it because we used to watch some games. Remember some of the guys down there, but the Kevin O'Neill offense, good mm-hmm. grief. Uh, I mean, paint watching paint dry was just as exciting. Jerry yep. Green, a little better, you know, some better offenses, but Conzo Martin's offense was hard to watch. Uh, I like it, and, and I like that Barnes is one of those guys that I was curious about him at the end of last season, and I said it the whole time. I said it at the end after the way last season went. To, Rick Barnes needed to go look in the mirror, and <laughs> and he did. I mean. He transformed that roster, and he's transformed his style of play. I didn't know that he would actually do that or not. But, I mean, through 
one game tonight through a scrimmage, yeah. through a, an exhibition game. It looks like he's changed it. And uh, let me hit this other super chat here. We've got uh, right to vape. Says Chandler will get better the first five games. I'm excited to see him when they play Villanova yeah. and play either Purdue or North Carolina. That's uh, – seeing Chandler against big boy competition is going to be interesting to see it, as it, well. It, it'll be nice. Um, you know, and that's that's one thing, of course uh, – Last year, you had Springer uh, tweak an ankle early, so he kind of started off slow. But uh, Keon, it, it took him a little bit to find his legs. I, I think uh, I think Chandler came out tonight, and he kind of lived up to that billing as, you know, having all the hype coming into the season. He played well. Um, shot, shot great. I mean, four or four from three. And he didn't take bad shots either. Um, that's, that's something he, he played, he played with poise and played like an upperclassman to, to me. That's, it really seemed like he was, um, a, a lot more suited, uh, for the college game than, than a true freshman. Looked comfortable. Yeah. I mean, he, he looked like he'd been there before. Didn't look like the stage was too big for him. And of course, you know, it, it is UT Martin, but still yet it's, uh, I didn't hear what the crowd was down there. I did uh, see one of them on Twitter said, well, the good thing, no cardboard cutouts in the stands <laughs> yep. tonight. I would imagine it was probably a pretty decent crowd, uh, especially first time Thompson Bowling could have full capacity for a basketball game in a couple of years. Uh, so, I mean, that's I, – I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I thought he looked comfortable. I thought he looked good. I thought I thought his shot looked effortless. I mean, just pull up, and it, it just looked natural. It looked smooth. Uh, Tim Bradley, I, yeah, I totally agree. It's wild how much coaches change his style of play. Shows he's still hungry. It does. He could have stayed. He could have been that guy after last year saying, "By God, I'm Rick Barnes. We're doing this the Rick Barnes way." Not changed. Kept the same roster. Added a little bit to it, and, and went on, but. He made some tough decisions. Uh, I got to think some guys were encouraged that they didn't fit his vision moving yeah. forward. It sucks. I mean, it's uh, guys who who did some decent things when they were there, but I think maybe that change of scenery was needed. But it also allowed him to revamp this roster. Getting Justin Powell was big. Yeah, I think he's gonna pay dividends. You saw it tonight with his shooting. He's going to have bigger nights down the line. And I know the thing that stood out to me with him at Auburn was he could shoot, he could score, but also he could rebound, he could assist as well. His numbers were pretty impressive all the way around the board. And I think that's going to show, uh, you know, getting – I think that you mentioned Ziegler, you're kind of under-the-radar guy. That one really kind of came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, this guy visits, and he's committed and reclassified. Yep. And he might pay some – you know, I think he's going to pay some dividends for them with his shooting, with his speed, because you're not going to – if anything, I'd like to see him Chandler race. Well, and that's, <laughs> I think that would be interesting. That's one thing that uh, Bradshaw said during the broadcast, said that uh, Ziegler came in, and he's he's been pushing Chandler. And pushing him to, to be better. And, and when you got two guys with elite speed like that, man, y- you know that they're trying to get the best of each other in practice. And that's that's what you got to have. That's what you got to have to get better. Uh, you got to have somebody across from you pushing you to be better. And you got to have coaches that are going to coach you up. And, yeah. and uh, um, that's that's one thing that I've, I've heard um, and, and read. Uh, Barnes. Barnes will get after you in practice. You 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 take a playoff. You you slack around. You'll be over on the stair climber. Yeah. And you know I I love it. I, I I think I think there is things have gotten so far away from that. Um, you know, you're not held accountable uh, as as an athlete. It seems. Uh, and 
you know, I, I'm not saying, you know, player abuse or, or anything. I, I'm just saying, you know, get up in their grill and, and you coach them up. Uh, for, for me, that's, uh, that's kind of how it's done that, you know, I mean, you, you coach a little bit. Do you get on you? Do you get on the kids a little bit? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't, I don't uh, humiliate them right, right, by right. any means, but I mean, no. you know, when you coach and you know, this, you work on stuff and you work on it and the guys say it, it pisses you off. Right. And, uh, well, that's, yeah, I mean, you get on them to clean it up. That's what I, I tell the girls on the softball team. I, I ho- I've i seen you do the stuff that you're not doing in practice I don't know how many times. I know your potential, and you're not reaching your potential. That's what's frustrating. And, and I think Barnes, uh, you know, he, he's an old-school guy, uh, which, like you said, it's, it's surprising to see him kind of uh, – go away from what he's traditionally done uh, and kind of play to the strengths of the, the, the guys on the roster uh, because that's, that's really what it looks like. Um, but, you know, I, I think he, he was – that hire was highly criticized. You know, when, when Barnes was brought in, Everybody, oh, you know, he's cashing a check until he retires. And and like you said earlier, what he did in the offseason uh, to, to this team for this roster and the turnover, the recruiting, the transfer portal, um, man, uh, I, I think he earned his money in the offseason. We'll see if it pays off. We'll see if uh, he and and the, the staff, uh, the, the new assistants, if they can have kind of the effectiveness that they've had in in the regular season, and it will transfer to the postseason. Do you know the answer to this one? I saw it earlier, man. Last I knew of, Kevin O'Neill was in the NBA. I, uh, I think I heard he was over the college game, but I'm not sure anymore, actually. I, yeah, I don't know after the – I've – yeah. I heard he was in the NBA, but who knows? <laughs> hey, as long as he's nowhere near Knoxville, that's all that matters. So, uh, but uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I mean, going back to Barnes again, like you said, when he come in, I thought when they got him at the time, you had just endured the whole Conzo Martin thing with the petition, which me personally, I thought was embarrassing. I get it. People wanted Pearl back. But I just thought it was a bad look. You know, I wasn't a fan of Martin, so to speak, but I was even more not a fan of the petition. I don't I don't hold Bruce Pearl in high regard. I appreciate what he did when he was here. And frankly, what he did now, if you look at it, it's a joke that he got in that much trouble. If he would have had a strong admin, which he did not have, that would have been water under the bridge. Mm-hmm. But still, yeah. How the guy's still coaching in college, I'm amazed because I don't know how much stuff's come out at Auburn. But then you had Martin, you had Tyndall, you had that whole debacle there. Barnes come in at the right time. But, yeah, I mean, it looked – and people were saying at first, this guy's just riding it out because he didn't start out out of the gates rolling in these five-star guys. No. But look what he did. He got your Grant Williams, your Jordan Bone. Well, n- none Kyle of those Alexander. guys were. None of those guys were highly recruited. They, Not they at weren't, all. They weren't. I don't even know that they were four stars. They no. may have been low, low four. But he coached them up. Uh, the strength and conditioning uh, under Barnes has been ridiculous. I, I'm sure that everybody's seen the pictures of Schofield when he came in versus Schofield when he left. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you well, know. I mean, he developed Sco- – Schofield come in under Tyndall. Yeah. But, I mean, look what look how they developed there. I mean, it's uh, – the player development's been really good. Now, I mean, Jordan Bowden, he fell off his senior year, but his player development up till that point was good. Lamonte Turner, he was a reclassified guy. I mean, that he, that was a huge loss to them the year Lamonte Turner yeah, went out. Because that team was rolling. And when he went out, they just never recovered. Of course, COVID ended that season early. 
But his play, you know, I thought last year was a little odd, but like I said, it was an anomaly. It was a COVID year. Things were just odd on it. I expect we're going to see these guys develop more this year. Uh, player development has not been an issue with Barnes. Now, he lost two good assistants, and the good thing that I've liked under Barnes is when assistants have left, it's not been because they've gotten canned or it's for like a demotion a or a lateral position. It's head they've upgraded – to a head coaching job that that says something for yeah. what they're doing and uh and these are decent jobs these guys are getting george mason the etsu i mean they're not power five but those guys have made noise in march before but uh um <clears throat> you you want to throw up uh that question from uh vols for life real quick uh we're going to stick to basketball tonight. Uh, come back, join us tomorrow night. Uh, we seven o'clock, seven o'clock right here on the Talking Vols Network. We will be doing our midweek football show, uh, talking about the upcoming game against the Georgia Bulldogs. So uh, we'll get uh, we'll get football in all we want tomorrow night. Uh, Bo- Boogie will be back with us. Uh, Seven o'clock. So, uh, if yeah, you- thanks for asking. It's, uh, yeah, we know football's football's definitely king in Knoxville on basketball nights. That's you know, that, that's our focus, uh, right there. But, uh, but I don't know if there's any news today. I know Boogie put out a video about the transfer portal, uh, receiver from Texas on that. I know he's going to have something tomorrow. I I would imagine there's a Georgia scouting report coming at some point this week, unless I missed it. I know I've missed something earlier this week. So, Boogie, if you already did it, I apologize. I missed it. Uh, But, but yeah, basketball tonight. Again, uh, like Dauber said, 7 p.m. tomorrow night. We'll talk football. We'll talk Georgia then. But – where does this team go from here with basketball? We got ETSU this weekend. I think that's going to be a little more of a test for them. It will and then getting um, ready for Villanova. You know, ETSU is coming off of uh, uh, let's see, was it last year? Uh, I guess it was last year. Forbes and and they won what? No, it's two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, and last year they got bounced uh, in in their conference tournament in the championship game. Um, but, you know, traditionally a, a pretty good uh, small school. Um, they, they've got a lot of uh, guys coming in uh, via transfer. But, uh, you know, Jason Shea, uh, we, we, we know him from his time in Knoxville. Uh, good, good coach. He'll have him ready to play. Um, and, They've got some talent on that roster. Um, well, Shay's gone now. It's uh, Oliver from UT staff last year. That, that, that's right. That's right. Shay, I think, is back with Forbes at Wake Forest again. Shay, Shay uh, ducked out right after. Um, so, yeah, never mind. I think there was some interesting, sir. I, I, yeah. I don't know how much of that was because uh, I know they had the whole kneeling. That, the and national that anthem big, thing. That's right. I know people were upset about that up around Johnson City. I think there were some donors. I think that caused a pretty big stir. But I think – I don't know. Uh, I, I think, you know, even beyond that, I don't know how well-liked he was. I don't know. I, you know, you, you kind of read between the lines. You read different things on it. And, I mean, there was a lot of guys transferring out. It, it's – it, it it was it was definitely a uh, interesting situation. So yeah, so I think Oliver was a big. I, I think especially considering the turmoil that ETSU had, I, I thought that was a really good hire uh, for them. He he brings the kind of standard, you know, of of a Rick Barnes coach team. Yeah, uh, because that's that's what he has been around. So. Uh, provide some stability, I, I think, when, like you said, when times were conflicted. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely going to be a, a tough task. Uh, you got to come out. I think 
the thing that I look for them to, to clean up from tonight to Sunday is those easy drives to the basket. Man, step up, uh, slide over, get in front of somebody. Don't just let it blow by you. And, and I think a lot of that had to do with uh, UT Martin's quickness uh, running out the gate. Uh, and, and Tennessee had uh, had a bigger lineup in. And, uh, you know, some of those guys just can't can't handle that speed. And we, we saw it last year as well. Um, the teams that had uh, really good guard play, uh, really quick guard play, gave Tennessee fits. So, um, you know, it, yeah. well, I think I think they look to pair down uh, the the guys that are playing. Um, you know, I, I hopefully the the perimeter shooting stays hot. <laughs> um, well, I think tonight might have been a sign of things to come. You had Chandler twenty, Vescovi twenty, Powell thirteen. I, I think there's going to be a lot of nights where that's your three main guys, yeah, scoring wise, yeah. and and I could even see some nights where all three go for twenty. Throw Folky in there, yeah. Throw Folky. I mean, you had Conway yeah. had eleven, and then Huntley Hatfield seven, and uh, Euros and Victor Bailey had six. So I, I would imagine you're going to see. Like I said, I think a lot of nights it's going to be Vescovi, Chandler, Powell. I, I'm curious with Folky because he seems to have been hurt most of the offseason. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see which Folky we're going to get this year. Are we going to get the uh, Folky who carried them two years ago, or are we going to see – of course, last year, uh, I don't think he was healthy most of the year yeah. last year. But, you know, I, if it takes him missing a couple of games right now to get fully healthy, it's worth it. Oh, for uh, sure. Because if, if we get to two years ago Folky in there – that's huge, or, or even approaching close to it, because he he was a stud. He, he was carrying that team two years ago. Oh, he he he's the reason they they went up to to Lexington and and came away with the victory and, and Rupp up there two years ago. It's, uh, pretty pretty much single handedly. Um, yeah, that was possibly one of the the best perform gutsiest performances. Uh, in a Tennessee basketball uniform that I've seen. Uh, I, you just got to love his motor and his heart. Uh, the, the fact that he came back for a sixth year. Um, I, you, you just hope he closes out his career with uh, just, you know, a, a, a ridiculous run. Because uh, I tell you, I was heartbroken. Heartbroken. Yeah. Uh, when, when he went out in the SEC tournament, and that was potentially the way his career was going to end. So w- when he made the the announcement to come back, I, I was like, man, it, it, it sets itself up for for a spectacular ending. Um, and, and there are the pieces that are around him. It, it could be special. It can. I mean, that that's kind of the last two years since Jordan Bone uh, – Bone was a heck of a point guard, but the last two years, I mean, when Turner went out, Turner, I think, would have held it down fine. But since Turner's gone out, uh, and I like Vescovi. I think Vescovi's a decent player. I think he gets a bad rap, but I think he's played out of position yep. his first two or his first year and a half because he was an early enrollee uh, midterm two years ago. I think that now that he's playing his – probably what will be his more natural position – now you got two burners at well, point guard. He, he looked so much more comfortable, uh, you know, catch and shoot or, or get the handoff, come around the screen and, and shoot. Um, I, I felt he pressed too much when he was trying to run the point. And even right before Vescovi came over um, and, and Turner had left, they, they ran uh, Josiah James uh, yeah. at, at point for a little bit and, and, I think that he really struggled and looked lost trying to run the offense. Um, so it, it was super refreshing tonight to see Kennedy Chandler come out and um, get guys involved, uh, make some uh, really good-looking reads and passes. 
And then for him to to shoot as well as he did, I was a little bit surprised um, at that. But uh, man, there, there's a lot of potential uh, for this team. Um, I think it starts uh, this this weekend, kind of paring down the the core group of guys you're going to have playing and, and eating up a, a big bunch of your minutes, or, or getting the the kind of rotations of guys because that that's critical. Uh, the the five you have out on the floor at the at the same time, um, and, and I know it'll it'll change up based on who we're playing if they've got bigs or if if they're running quick because um, it makes no sense to have um, like we saw that against Alabama last year, um, you know, get, you, you got four perimeter guys out there and and trying to run two or three big guys, it, it doesn't work so. We'll see how Barnes uh, approaches this season and the the roster that he has. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch it play out. Yeah, I think it's the main thing. Hopefully, they've got a rotation. I think last year we were, I think we expected and thought coming in like, man, this is gonna be a deep team, and it ended up six seven. Yeah, that was about as deep as they went. So hopefully, they've got. You know, based on, you know, I think you've got, of course, Chandler and Ziegler at point. I think you've got combinations of Bailey, Vascovi, Powell. I mean, there's five. Fulkerson. Yeah. Kamwa, I think he's definitely going to play a role. Huntley Hatfield, uh, Josiah Jordan-James. They should be pretty deep this year where they can rotate guys in and out. Hopefully, you know, uh, Meshack, I know he played in there a little bit tonight. Yeah. You know, what's yeah, he going to contribute? Guy, that's a guy we didn't even mention until just now. That's right. Uh, yeah, I mean, he played. I don't know. I don't have their minutes, how many they played. ESPN doesn't have that updated. But, I mean, he had a couple of points. Uh, Jabunje, I think is how you pronounce his name. He must have gotten it just a little. But, I mean, right here they played uh, 11 guys tonight. I, I would say at least nine of those are going to play a role. That's not including Fulkerson. So there's 10, 10 to 11 guys. Yeah. If they if they can develop these guys, keep that depth. I mean, like I said, strength and conditioning has been a plus the entire time. But it also helps when you got that depth where you can spell a guy, where you can give a dude a little bit of a rest. Well, or espe- as well. Especially if they're gonna if they're gonna play with pace. I mean, we're seeing that uh from the other team down there in Knoxville. You play with pace. You got to have uh, conditioning. You got to have depth. So, Good thing in basketball, you can't hit the court. Yeah, and stop it. Yep, you, that, that ain't happening. They're just gonna keep on playing, and then you get out of the game. So, <laughs> so that, that's a plus. Can't lay down for sure. Okay. All right, well, we've got uh, eighty-eight people. We're at the hour mark. I think we're gonna wrap this thing up here, but. Uh, Again, like we mentioned earlier, we will be live tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern time, talking balls live, football. We'll talk uh, – I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about Kentucky from this past weekend. We'll preview going into Georgia this weekend. Uh, is Tennessee going to have a chance? Or are they going to get blown out? I, the good thing, the funny thing is the last couple of weeks I got accused one week of being a sunshine pumper and last week I got accused of being a nega ball. So I must be doing something right because I've got that opinion covered both ways on it. But but I'm sure, uh, sure we'll have a good show tomorrow night. Hope you guys will tune in on that. Duke and Kentucky going right now. So if you're interested in seeing Kentucky tonight, uh, Kentucky's – I love it. I, I like this night of basketball starting with Michigan State and Kansas and now Kentucky and Duke. That's that's starting out of the gate hot yeah. right there. But uh, fun night watching Tennessee basketball. It's a new product. It's a new team. I think there's a lot to be excited. Hopefully this team can continue to improve, continue to develop, and continue to sustain. So uh, got any final thoughts? Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see you guys tomorrow night. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in with us. Uh, We appreciate you guys tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your night.
Have a good day tomorrow. You guys take care. And in the words of Boogie Bentley, go Big Orange. <laughs>